Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on rcwithadam.com. My name is Adam and today I want to show you these three all-in-one flight controller board adapter plates that I have designed and 3D printed. Now I have been looking for a good adapter for my all-in-one flight controller board that I have been wanting to put on a 3-inch Sinew. Now you might say, why do you need an adapter board? for your all-in-one flight controller. Well, an all-in-one flight controller, uh, and they're becoming ever more popular with the rise of micro drones. Um, an all-in-one flight controller board, in case you don't know, has everything that you need in one board. So it has four ESCs, um, well, typically just four ESCs and the flight controller, but it can also have like a receiver and video transmitter built in sometimes. So the thing is with all-in-one uh, boards, typically, or I guess most commonly, the hole spacing, so from, from hole to hole, is uh, 25, it's, well, it's 25.5 uh, millimeters. So from hole to hole, and that's not diagonally, but like side to side. That is different from the typical sizes or what has been uh, the most common, which is uh, 20 by 20, like this guy right here, 20 millimeter from hole to hole, side to side, and uh, also 30, uh, 30 by 30. So uh, this would be like this larger, and I don't have one of those right here, but I do have a plate. So this is this would be like the bottom plate of a quadcopter. And so you have the 30 by 30 hole spacing here and the 20 by 20. If you want to put a, an all-in-one flight controller board on uh, a quadcopter that does not have holes for that particular board, well, you can drill your own holes, but that, uh, that could be kind of problematic and kind of messy, and maybe you don't want to screw up your frame or something. Uh, so what you can do is put an adapter plate in there. And without further ado, this is what I came up with. I have two right here that have pegs. I printed these in clear PLA. This is a 3D Fuel uh, Workday clear uh, PLA, but this is, uh, so they're kind of hard to see, but you can see there we have four pegs and that may not work super well on your printer, depending on what kind of printer you have and if your filament has uh, excess moisture. So that's a little bit tricky to print that actually, but um, it works out pretty well. Uh, and I'll be doing more testing on this, but essentially the pegs are there so that in a flight controller like this, you can just uh, slide the little rubber grommet uh, vibration dampers onto the pegs and it will hold in place. And the pegs are sized so that there's a good amount of friction. And so I really don't think that's gonna come off unless, I mean, maybe in a very serious crash, but I'm, I'm still doing more testing. So we'll see about that, but they are quite strong really. Um, overall, the pegs are quite strong. So I like that quite a bit. And you can see you have a little, little bit of gap there. The downside is you don't have a way of like threading a nut on here. Maybe I'll change the design in the future so that you can put a little nut on there. I guess if you really wanted to just lock it in place, you could just kind of melt the end of the of the peg here and then just kind of like squish it down. So that would be one option. And on the back here, we have uh, mounting options for 30 by 30, that's the largest, and then uh, 20 by 20 next in, in line there, and then 16 by 16. I haven't messed with 16 by 16 mounting, but I know some people um, have that, so I wanted to put the option in there. And um, the, the, the 20 by 20 and the 16 by 16 are M2 or two millimeter hole uh, spacing, or it's actually, it's a little smaller than two millimeters because it's, it's to thread a two millimeter screw. And then the 30 by 30, that is three millimeter. So I, I think that's probably most common. And if you come into a situation where you wanna use an M3 screw, in the 20 by 20 hole, well, you can just kind of like heat up the M3 screw or, or heat, heat, heat up the plastic a little bit and, uh, or just drill it out and just kind of make it a little bit larger. You'll notice that this one uh, keeps the board sort of in line in the typical configuration. So you'd have like your quadcopter, you know, front to back or front to back, whichever way. So what that does is uh, it, it basically keeps it square just like at right angles uh, to the forward direction of flight. Um, the thing is, oftentimes these flight controller, these all-in-one flight controllers are actually intended to be mounted diagonally. So if you had the, well, let's say that way is the forward direction of flight, it would be mounted something like this. So instead of 
instead of square, it would be sort of mounted diagonally, sort of in a diamond kind of format. Now, if you don't want to change the board orientation, but you still want to mount to a typical uh, 30 by 30 stack or 30 by 30 size hole or 20 by 20, right here, as, as you see here, you can use this one. So the pegs go on here just like this, just like so. like that and you just kind of press that down. Yeah, so if you wanted to mount it uh, still diagonally, you could, so you could just put some some screws in there. Now, both of these peg options are pretty cool, especially if you can actually print the pegs, I think they will work pretty well. It's a nice, easy install, but maybe you don't want pegs or maybe you just, I don't know. Honestly, I think the best of these is actually the flat plate right here. So this one is similar to the this, this one right here, except it doesn't have pegs. So this is just a flat plate. So this one right here allows you to mount your board diagonal fashion compared to our normal hole spacing, or you could also mount it like this in order to keep that that's kind of standard squared up format. One way to mount this would be to have the plate just screwed in to the, 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 the adapter plate screwed into the bottom plate of the quadcopter like so. I'm just using two screws for this example, but you'd want to use all four screws. And then you could just screw an M2 screw that's the right length, if you can find one the right length, and just screw it into the adapter plate sort of like from the top. These are actually a little bit too long, but you get the idea. So you can uh, screw them into the adapter plate and mount your uh, all-in-one board like this. And of course, you could also mount this just like a regular 20 by 20 uh, for a 20 by 20 stack as an adapter to a 30 by 30 or vice versa. Well, there you go, folks. Hopefully this adapter plate will give you more mounting options for your quadcopter building needs. Of course, you can download this for yourself for free to 3D print if you have a 3D printer, and you can find those uh, links to GrabCAD and Thingiverse down in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate you. I appreciate your time, and I will see you again very soon.